Good morning, guys. It is grouting day. We have the tile prepared. As a lot of you guys know or have seen, the entire floor has now been tiled throughout the kitchen and into the breakfast nook. So we are at the point now where we are going to be adding the grout and we actually picked up the grout prior to our little incident that occurred in last video, which was using the wrong mortar to stick down all of our edge pieces. So we already have the grout on hand. So the brand of grout that we are using is Latacrete and I got this at Floor and Decor. We ended up grabbing I believe five bags of this particular color and the color is in hemp which I thought would be a nice kind of like mushroomy grayish kind of a color and that's really what I'm going for in here something on the darker side but not too dark and not too light something kind of medium toned this just seems good to me. So we are going to try this out. And the technique that we are going to be using to grout the flooring is actually using a grout bag. And this is what a lot of masonry, you know, tile workers do when they do masonry work on stone walls or fireplaces is they use a grout bag because it fills in all the cracks and crevices. You actually kind of overflow the grout and kind of pool it a little bit. And then you knock it off the surface once it's dried down a little. So I will share with you guys the entire process. I've never done anything like this before so we will see how it goes but after today I'm hoping we should have all of the grouting done and an actual floor we can walk on we're gonna use this Tupperware bucket to mix our grout because the mortar we forgot to clean out of the other bucket <laughs> So we ended up mixing two bags of grout at once and something that is such a lifesaver is one of these drill attachments that actually mixes for you. You can get these at the hardware store. They're like $20, but they really do make the mixing process so much easier. I just kind of swirl the grout around like this to get it started, then actually use the drill and you can mix it up. This is a second bag going in here. This is going to thicken it all up, but we still do want it to be a pretty thin consistency because we are going to be piping it into all of the joints. All right, guys, the grout is looking good. I actually really like the color in here. I do believe it's gonna dry a bit lighter just because it's wet at the moment. And then these right here are the grout bags that I'll be using. They're just from Home Depot. They're like $5 each and they're fully washable. So I'm going to cut the tip just a little bit wider and we are going to start filling up the grout bag and it's probably start in this back corner and work our way down. Breakfast nook. <laughs> Bag. Look at this big piping bag. I feel like a cake decorator. I mean, I was. I was certified by Wilton. Took four classes, so if you need a cake, you know where to go. And I have my grout in the bag. And we're going to start, I, I kind of want to start at this corner. I don't know why. I just know furniture is going to be placed over this area, so if it goes bad, that's why. Um, okay, here goes nothing. I think it's supposed to be thinner. <laughs> It's just like freaking hard to push out of here. All right, we're thinning down the grout because it was too thick. We had to remove it from the grout bag. I'm just adding a bit more water so that we can get it, so it flows a bit easier. Now this consistency here is perfect. As you can see, I'm piping it out of the bag. I'm overflowing the joints just a little bit. And by overflowing, I mean that I'm squeezing the bag extra hard so that some of the grout actually kind of pops above the tiles. And do not worry if this seems a little bit messy. What's actually gonna happen is it's going to be hardening down and then we're gonna knock the hardened grout off the top. So it's gonna be a lot easier to knock that off if you do have extra. And now something else I could say about this grouting technique is it does use a lot more grout than your traditional grouting technique but if you don't want to fill your natural stone tiles with grout as you can see there's a bunch of holes here they would be filled fully with that grout then this is a technique that you might want to try out and it's also really nice to do this if you have kind of inorganic grout lines which comes with a lot of more natural stones this just makes it easier to get the grout in the area that you want it to go uh, I personally find and it's also kind of fun Oh. 
Okay guys, it has been probably about two hours and I wanted to share with you how much grouting we have done. So this is how much. We actually left a little pathway down the center here just so that we're able to remove the grout from the left and right side. Then we'll be able to go in and like add the grout to the center section here. So we'll be doing that after. But essentially what you're going to want to wait for now um, is the grout to kind of harden. So if you could see, it kind of is like a little tacky. If I touch it, it's not transferring. It's a bit hard. However, it's not to the point yet where we can kind of chip it off the surface and get the excess away. I'm just gonna check every like 20 minutes how it's doing. I also want to say that we grouted in sections and left a little pathway that way we were able to walk back through and check areas to see how dry they were. So we are at the point now where the grout as you can see when I tap it it's like it's not sticky doesn't at all feel like it's kind of just like half hard if that makes sense like it's like halfway dry as you can see it's like you can touch it and it's not going to transfer i mean there might be like a little bit of transfer but it's not wet anymore it's like more so half hard so what i'm going to do is actually just use a trowel and i'm going to go in and scrape off the top of the surface this kind of hardened product and something else you can do is with your remainder grout if you have any areas where it didn't fill in, like let's say you want to add a little more grout here per se, you can actually take just some of your half-hardened grout and just kind of push it in almost like Play-Doh and then re-smooth out your line and then you'd go over this little area with a wet sponge just to kind of smooth that out. Once I knocked a bulk of the grout off using the trowel, I knew I wanted to kind of give this more of a cobblestone-y feel. So I knew I wanted to scrape the joints with something that was almost half rounded. So I found this paint stir stick that I had. It's a metal stir stick and I used that to actually scrape all the joints and give them just a slight half rounded look and just take a little bit of the grout out so it almost had this like inlaid brick cobblestone effect. You can also see right here where the piping bag didn't get the grout in. Just take some of your crumbled grout and shove it in the crack. Just smooth it right back out. Because it's still a little wet, um, you're gonna be able to do that. It is looking so good. Like, I cannot believe these are turning out as well as they are. It literally looks like there's dirt all over the floor. <laughs> We're gonna vacuum this up. Same. Color I know, it's dirt. Mode. Yeah. I also used a shop vac to vacuum up absolutely all of like the sediment and debris and extra grout that was knocked off the surface. Now I do know this could totally ruin the shop vac. However, I purchased my shop vac for projects like this and it hasn't died on me yet. So I'm going to continue using her. She is going strong. Our last and final step, as you can see the floor looks so nice, I'm going to take a sponge, I dipped it in some water, and I'm just going to wipe the top of everything, just to get any of... And this right here is where I messed up. As you could see, I am essentially taking the white powdery top layer off of all the tiles and transferring it onto the grout, the dark toned grout, which I was wondering why this grout ended up drying lighter. And you're gonna see that in a bit here, but just backtracking a tiny bit, this is where I messed up. The extra grout off and also just to clean the tiles and make sure everything is nice and smooth. You can also rub it in the grout lines, make sure that they're nice and smooth. You're gonna to wanna to do this before it's fully dry. So maybe like two hours after you grout or so, I'd say. It's crazy how undusty they look when they're wet. Mm -hmm. Like it looks like a whole different floor. Completely different. So I realized where I went wrong in the process and that was I should have sponged the tiles once they were down and before grouting. So I should have mopped or cleaned the entire flooring before doing the grouting because I just transferred all of the dustiness from cutting the tiles on the tile saw, which really did create quite a bit of dust on the surface. I don't know why I just assumed that that dust would be, you know, like soaked into the grout or it wouldn't affect the color at all, which definitely does affect the color. So keep that in mind. If you're using a darker grout, always ensure that 
that your tiles are really, really clean prior to grouting and sponging because anything on your tile, once you sponge, is going to be transferred into your grout. Good morning, guys! It is the second day of grouting, and Justin actually came over early this morning and started doing the grouting, which, wow, thanks, Justin. He was actually editing up today's video this morning, so he ended up finishing up the grouting. This is what it is looking like, and we're just now waiting for it to dry so we can go back through and do the same exact step. The reason why we have um, this secondary, I guess, day of grouting is because this was our pathway that we had left so that we were able to scrape and clean this side and this side now we're just doing um, our pathway that we had created which once this is all dried down hopefully will look seamless with the other grout it truly is shocking to me though how dark the grout goes on versus how light the grout dries like this doesn't even look like the same product and I think we know why um, definitely was that just white casty film over the top of all of the tiles which just comes with even the you know tile manufacturer cutting these tiles they get so much of that tile cut dust I don't even that's probably not the terminology on the tiles that you really do need to clean them and I just didn't realize I needed such a good cleaning prior I really thought keeping that white dust on and having it mix into the process was just going to intensify kind of the reclaimed look of them but it it didn't honestly it made them look a little bit newer Good morning, I have exciting news. The floor is done. We've finished all of the tiling in the entire kitchen and I'm gonna flip the camera and show it to you guys. Look how incredible this looks, you guys. I cannot believe it turned out this amazing. Now, of course, there's still quite a bit of like grout haze over the top, meaning that we need to mop it with some water and just get off all of the extra dustiness over the top. But look how incredible the threshold looks. And of course, this is tiled just so that it kind of inclines the tiniest bit to meet up with the flooring. Now over here, I'll probably do a threshold as well, but I wasn't too sure what I want to do with this opening yet. Then walking through here, it looks like this. I just love it. It is so, so pretty. Um, we do still have to seal it. Now working into this room, just look how incredible. And this right here is more of an idea of what it looks like when we wipe off the dust. So currently there's all this kind of like grout haze. Now we're gonna wipe it off and it's gonna look more like this all over. And give it a washing. Yeah, George Washington. <laughs> I'm giving the floor a wash. <laughs> That's what my grandpa would say. We're giving the floor a washing. Where you are in the blinds put down love it when nobody's around I wanna call out my town But you bite my lip, don't make a sound I'll be down if I'm leaving without you We are at F&S Fabrics this morning because I realized we're moving in on Saturday, which is currently Monday. Moving in on Saturday and the couch is not reupholstered. The couch, we have nothing to sit on. So I need to start getting the ball rolling on getting the couch reupholstered, pick out some fabric, or at least get an idea for what fabric I'm wanting to do because I actually ended up selling the article couches that were in the current space just because I didn't want to bring them over. I already knew that I had the sofa to replace those ones, so I didn't want to have to bring them over and move them if necessary, so I did sell those on Facebook Marketplace. And we are now at FNS Fabrics. Justin's here, and we're gonna go inside and see what fabric they have. I kind of want to do something a bit daring, so let's see. I don't know, I'm just so, look at like, look what I'm wearing right now. This is the same material, is it not? This is like kind of what I want to do on the couch. A little bit of this vibe, but I'm also open to something geometric or, I mean like, gosh, even like these are so pretty. This block print with the like checkered in the background, you can tell there's like gray and then green, is so beautiful. I also absolutely love this. It reminds me of a very Spanish vibe too with the yellow, red, and green. Oh, you guys look at these boucles. 
Oh, this one's so pretty. This brown is so yeah, great I too. Feel like, like it's so cool though. Why am I obsessed with that? That is me in a fabric, honestly. Checkers, lines, warm tones. I really like this. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Justin it's doesn't know. So 70s. It's cool, but like on a full couch. Love this section too because I feel like the fabrics just have this worldly vibe to them. This color and this texture. <laughs> oh, do you see that? So true. Yeah. So true. Like if you did something like solid and textural on the couch, and yeah. then you could juice it up with a bunch of pillows and stuff, that could also be a good way to go. Unless you want to go funky. On the I think couch. I want to go funky on okay. the couch. Like I maybe something it. even color wise, okay. but just like the style yeah. of it and the way it felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we like something like maybe or? I do like woolly guys, and yeah. it comes in some other colors. This one, you guys, the color is just so pretty. It looks a little purpley on camera, but I swear it's more of a kind of reddish, almost like a mauve. Oh my gosh, guys, I need quilted strawberries. That's a good one here. Wait, what's this? What's this? What is she? What is she? I love this. I love this so much. Wait. How much is this? $59 a yard. <clears throat> this is the vibe! Printed knit. Printed knit is the vibe. I've been here for a solid two hours. Justin probably thinks I'm crazy. Um, no, I think he understands. Oh, that's so pretty. We found this book called Stroheim Pastiche Collection. You guys, these fabrics are some of the most beautiful ones. Like, look. Oh my gosh, Justin, look at this color. Ooh. Oh. That one's really pretty too. That one is so pretty! Wait, you guys, but I just found this green. Oh. All right, guys, we've made a decision. This is the fabric. It is 100% linen, and I think it's gonna be so pretty on the couch. I just, I didn't want to go with a solid, and I thought this block print was great. Back from the fabric store and back in the kitchen area. This is what the floor is looking like. It has been drying now for probably like four or five days, so it is pretty dry. Now, I actually did a little test over here of darkening up the grout, and I actually do not like it at all. Luckily, I did it underneath the fridge area. I was going for a darker look, but I just don't think it looks that great with the tile. I actually am liking the way that the light tone is looking, which was not the original idea, but you know what? Sometimes you just shift your vibes a little bit. So we are actually going to be sealing the floor now, which might go ahead and lend to a bit of a darker grout as well. I'm not too sure. And once they're sealed, essentially, the water can't really penetrate into them and it allows them to be cleanable or a lot easier to clean. So we're gonna go ahead and seal the flooring, which should just be um, a pretty quick process. Also, when I was at Lowe's the other day, I saw this on the shelf and posted a photo of this and was like, what the heck is an impregnator sealer? And it happens to be the exact sealer that we're gonna be using on the floor so yes it's called a 511 impregnator sealer <laughs> i have my 24 inch roller i thought this would be a nice one to use and we are going to start sealing this floor is this hanging supposed to do it nope but that's fine <laughs>
You really do not realize how much dust is on the floor until you start vacuuming it, you guys. Look how dusty the floor was. I forgot my wood floor was this beautiful. Everything is still drying down over here, but it looks so good. It is molding day at the house. So you guys saw that we have all the tile in, all the grout in, and we are ready to actually finish off the underside of the cabinetry. And I wanted to share these with you guys. So I picked these up at Berber Imports this morning. I actually ended up filming a whole bunch there, um, but I'm gonna include it in this Sunday's video because I already have quite a bit in the one that's going up today. But look how pretty these are. They are Indian vintage moldings and they have this kind of flower motif on them and I thought in this dark wood color it really reminded me of like a Spanish style home and I love this really cutesy element so I thought adding this to the toe kicks of the cabinetry would be a really nice touch so I already kind of placed some out just to get an idea and we're gonna start measuring out this should actually be pretty simple there's just a couple of miter cuts that we have to do but nothing too crazy 